Hello world, it's me. This video has a couple of purposes. The first is to give a quick status update on this development board for the MozTech 38P70 version of the Fairchild F8 microcontroller. The second purpose is to start looking at the next version of this board and to ask those that are interested in this project if they have any suggestions for design changes or added features they'd like to see. The long and the short of it is everything on this board seems to check out okay. As you can see, I didn't even populate the display dimming circuit here, and I should have mentioned it in the last video that between the time that I ordered these boards and when they arrived, I took a few of my displays and I tested them by dimming them using the PWM output for my function generator. And the upshot is that these displays did not care for dimming at all. And the displays I have, they're all Lightronics. Perhaps a different brand would work, but I don't think it's worth bothering with, and I'd probably rather have some other features on that I.O. So I think I'm just going to replace that dimmer with something else. And if we look at this first F8 programming effort on this board, the goal wasn't to make a polished program. The goal was to check out the various features on the board and to become familiar enough with the board and with F8 assembly to start making a change request list for the next version. So with this version of the software, it's just, you know, some, some rough cut software needs to be fleshed out. But on reset, it displays the obligatory hello world message, and that confirms that I have full control of the displays, and that's about where I was at the end of the last video. It also shoots a message out the serial port, so I now have confirmed that I've got full control of the serial port. Of the serial port, I'm bit banging the RS-232 at 1200 baud. I have a bit delay value of 70, so certainly 2400 baud won't be a problem, maybe 4800 baud. I'll push that to the limit later, but for now I have the code to bit bang in and out from the serial port working. One thing I think I might do is in the next version, I may put in a jumper to allow the external interrupt to be triggered by the start bit coming in from the serial port. And that way the code doesn't have to have a timeout while waiting for an input character. You know, even on this board, a tiny bit of external interrupt sequencing for multiple hardware interrupts would be a nice feature but I'm not sure if that would be worthwhile to add. So now if you press the reset button, it lets you change the real-time clock values if needed. So I've demonstrated communication with the real-time clock. I can start and stop it at will. I can change the protection bit. I can read and write to the clock registers as well as the RAM. This uh, 1302 is 32 bytes of RAM on the battery backup. So I have also control of the battery charger and I'm using that to recharge this tiny little lithium cell here so that battery backup is working okay and the charger is working okay. One thing I do have on my change request for the next version is to put in a little Zener diode to offer a little over voltage protection for the battery in case somebody happens to select too few internal diodes on the charger. Right now I've got two diode drops on the charger and that could give a you know theoretical maximum of 3.6 volts. This particular battery only wants to have a maximum of 3.3 volts. So it would be nice to be able to put in a, a zener across that so that anytime it gets to the limit of that battery, you can pick a zener. Anytime it gets to that limit, it would just you know roll over and drop off. So everything with the real-time clock, including the battery backup, looks to be working okay. Another thing I played with on the display was the cursor. So the way these displays work, these intelligent displays, for each digit in the display, there's a character value, and then there's a cursor enable bit. So it depends on which register you write to, whether you're writing the character or whether you're writing the enable bit for the cursor. So at your leisure, you can write all the characters to be displayed, and then you can go through and you can pick which ones you want to have the cursor be displayed when you take the cursor signal high. So you assert the cursor signal, which is a signal coming off of one of the ports of the microcontroller, and then anything that you have set the bit enabled for that cursor, that cursor will turn on. And for these, the cursor is just all of the segments illuminated. If you're using the five by eight matrix display, it's just all of the dots illuminated. And that's nice in theory, but in practice, it's clumsy since it completely replaces the character. So it needs to be blinked off and on so you can see which, which digit is selected as well as what character is already in that digit. And I've tried several things to use the cursor 
to update the character and I found what I'm doing here to be the least offensive of everything. Here what I'm doing is I have the cursor enabled about 10% of the duty cycle so it just gives sort of a background illumination effect. In the final form I think I can do better and it'll be interesting to see what scheme others come up with but at any rate I started down that path to confirm that I had that I understand the cursor control for the display and that I do have control over that one pin. It would have been nice though if the cursor was just the outside box or if it was just a line underneath or something that was a little bit different than completely blocking out that display. So the user can press the button and they can set the hours and you can see that the hours now is two but you could change that if you wanted with the rotary switch but I don't want to adjust it because I'm checking the clock. You can now set the 10 hours then the minutes, the 10 minutes, the seconds, the 10 seconds. Another thing I did was I wanted to play with this little, this last digit, I have this little animation going to show you that what you really want to do is um, rotate the switch and then when you have selected the value you want then you press the button. So after we've set everything and again it, it reads the default values or it reads the current values from the real-time clock and then you're just overriding them if you actually make a change. But once you get out of that you finish that and then it just displays the clock. The lesson of all of that learn is that the switches are easy to read and debounce and I just used a little bit of software debouncing on this so I'm not going to put in some hardware debouncing on the switches I don't think that's necessary but their position placement is a little bit awkward in the next version I want to put them along the bottom just about where this pad per hole is so this little sandbox place will have to go somewhere else so I can put the switches down here where they're a little more accessible now what this little clock does in the way it's written now is at the top of the minute so when the minute rolls over to zero it will go back to the splash screen and it'll play a little tone that's really all I've got written now for the display I think I'll change that so instead of the seconds is showing the date or something but you know this is just a first effort to show that this is working let me put the microphone down there so you can hear it but when you press and hold this button it plays this tone and then you can adjust the pitch of the tone using the rotary switch so let me put the microphone down there and show this switch setting so you can see it displays which value it's using for the display over here on the left hand side So that just lets you pick which tone it's playing at the top of the hour or at the top of the minute. So the speaker works okay. Uh, you may want to adjust. I have a 500 ohm current limiting resistor in that speaker. You may want to adjust that to make the speaker a bit louder. Have the 555 over here and the resistor set up to give a period somewhat more than a second. So the 555 works okay. The output feeds the external interrupt. And upon interrupt, it's toggling that LED. So this LED is driven by the interrupt. So I have full control of the interrupt process on this F8. I don't really care for it much, but I at least have full control over it. I think that pretty well demonstrates that everything on this board is working as it was expected. And I don't have any other boards to order at the moment, so I'm not particularly rushed. But what I want to start thinking of is features for the next revision of this board. And in the meantime, while we're thinking about the next revision, I am going to upload the build files for this board to the SBC85 website and I'll be working and uploading progressive versions of the documentation and the bill of materials and stuff for this board. From time to time I'll upload some software or at least code snippets for useful code segments. If somebody gets in into a bind and they can't figure out how to do something I'll upload code segments on the SBC 85 website. So I, th I think what I'm suggesting is that most likely it's going to be the fall before we have another revision of this board and that revision it may have some additional features but I don't expect that it's going to be a game changer in terms of the capabilities if you're looking at building something now I think this revision of the board can bring hours and hours of fun and excitement to your bench you know much sooner rather than waiting for the next revision at some you know unknown date this fall and if you socket the displays and you decide to totally scrap this board when the next version comes out you're not gonna be out that much so if anybody decides to have some of these boards made from the build files that I put up on the website. If they want to post a message that they've got boards or if they want to email me and I can keep a list if who has boards for these that they're uh, sharing or selling or something like that. 
Now, I do have a few of the boards left from the original order. I think I ordered 10 of these boards. I was optimistic that they worked. I think I ordered 10 of them. So I do have a handful of them, five or so left, that uh, uh, I'll give away if, if you pay for shipping. If you want one of these boards, let me know in the comments below, and I will use the comments as the queue for the order of request. And so leave a comment if you want a board, and then if I have a board left, then I'll email, then you can email me and we can work out the details later. Now, when I put the board build files up on the website, I'll also put up a change request document. And it may be in the back of the user's manual, so be sure to look there if you're interested. The things that I have on my list already are, I need to add mounting holes to this. Somehow I forgot that. I need to add the pin numbers or names over here on the side. I already mentioned that. Probably the big thing that's going to be different between this board and the next board is I'm moving the I.O. around on the processor. That's for a couple of reasons. The first is I want the next revision of the board to be compatible with either the 38P70, which this is, or the 38P73, which is the version of that that has the internal UART. Now for the serial I.O. coming out the serial port, right now I have the serial in and the serial out on adjacent pins of the same port. However, without an instruction to rotate the accumulator, it's it's kind of inconvenient to have them right next to each other. So in the next version, when I'm using the 3870, I want to have the serial output as the least significant bit and the serial input as the most significant bit. Now, unfortunately, that means there's going to have to be jumpers for the serial in and out lines since the 3873 has already determined where the serial out and serial in are because it's got that UART built in and it's got dedicated pins for that. And they don't happen to be the least significant and the most significant bits. But it won't be a big deal to put in solder bridges or jumpers since that would just be a change that you would make when you were picking what processor to put on the board. It's not something you're gonna change frequently. And the reason it would be convenient to have the serial out as the least significant bit is because when you're sending something out the serial port, you know, the least significant bit is first and so you can shift them out to the right. And then when you're reading things in from the serial port, it's nice to shift them in from the left because that's going to be coming as the least significant bit first. The least significant bit works its way down to the bottom. So while this doesn't have a rotate, it does have a shift. Okay, so that's the serial ports. And the other thing I'm toying with is I may want to change the order of the display addresses. Right now, port zero or uh, digit zero is over here and digit F is on the far left. When you're writing to the displays, I'm starting with the beginning of the string. So, you know, when I say hello world, I'm starting with the H. That's the first thing in the character string. So you're reading that out of memory and you're incrementing the memory pointer. But at the same time, you're incrementing the memory pointer, you're decrementing the display pointer because it's going from F down to zero. And if you've started playing with the F8 instruction set, you'll see the dilemma. And, you know, maybe that is the best system because the F8 prefers to increment the accumulator and memory reads. In fact, there's not a decrement accumulator instruction and you can't stop from incrementing memory after you've done a memory read. So that works well to increment the memory. And, you know, on the other hand, it cannot increment primary scratch pad registers, which is where I'm keeping my values for the individual digits. So it can only decrement primary scratch pad registers. So neither order of the display works particularly well. Both turn out to be fairly clumsy. I'm just trying to decide which is less clumsy. And of course, that doesn't even mention the fact that the indirect scratch pad pointer on this is working in octal while everything else is working in hexadecimal. So if you've played with the assembly in this, let me know what you think about the order of the display, whether it should be zero and F on the left or zero and F on the right. Thinking about other things on this, I would like to have, I'm gonna take some of this space that was used for the dimmer circuit or the, the lines, the port lines that were used for the dimmer circuit. And I'd like to have more switches. I don't know if I want to have another rotary switch or if I want to have more push buttons or maybe some toggle switches. And as I mentioned, I uh, wanna put them down here where they're a little bit easier to access. You know, the, truth be told, the thing that I use the most when bringing this board up and as I slog my way through the F8 assembler is this header. It's really nice to have an output port to hang the logic probe on when you're doing programming for the diagnostics. You know, the nice thing about the push button switches is you can use that port for diagnostic outputs as long as you remember later that if you're going to 
test a switch for closure, you need to flip that to an input. So anything that you have a switch on it, you can use that for an output when you're doing diagnostics, and then you flip it to an input whenever you want to read that switch. So we'll see what other ideas people have in, in terms of adding this, but I'll probably just fill things up with switches and LEDs at the end of it. Alrighty then, that's it for this video. If you're going to have extra boards made, please consider sharing or selling the extras. And if you want one of the extras that I have, uh, claim your place in the queue by leaving a comment. And also toss in your suggestions of what else you think would make this little single board F8 development platform even more fun than it already is. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I will talk with you later. Bye-bye.